I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from South Carolina, USA. She runs her own business, World Max. She's a just hitting her second year as a uh, rewarding for as an MVP. She's known as the Superwoman of the inaugural Dynamics Con event. Yeah, so she owns that title. The Power App. Uh, she's a Power App user uh, group chapter lead at Columbia, South Carolina. She is the chief maximizer at World Max whose mission is to empower people, especially women and youth. World Max is also getting ready to open their second tech center for low-income areas. We'll, we'll, We'll drill into that in a moment. You can follow her on Twitter. And here's her Twitter handle, people. MMO90511. It's a pity that Twitter doesn't have a feature to go up and update one Twitter handle, which, of course, they do, because I have changed my Twitter handle multiple times. Anyhow, welcome to the show, Mary Thompson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know if I should like kind of like bob out of the way, you know, as this coming, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, and this is the second time you've been on the show, of course, or, or as an on the business application podcast, but on a different show. You're now an MVP, which is absolutely phenomenal, amazing. And today is about understanding your journey because it's such a cool journey. Um, and but you know, right now we we just talked off air about World Max a little bit. So why don't we start with World Max? Tell us what you've done there and what's happening. Yeah, I am so excited. So it's kind of like this fun, you know, journey that I've been on. And honestly, it all started at I guess a app in a day course. And as things transpired, you know, kind of got my MVP status working with Business Central and kind of specifically connecting it with the Power Platform. And uh, now here at World Max, I am a power platform company that specializes in a very niche market of connecting specifically with Business Central and working with mostly Business Central partners and kind of coming in and adding that value to, to their skill set so that they can continue with their day job, uh, but add some, you know, means more, I guess, revenue to their, to their product as well. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, so tell me, tell me about your community activities in the space as well. Oh, that's a whole nother job. I feel like sometimes, right. I, I absolutely love it. I'm doing a lot of different things, um, in the community. Let's see here. So currently the women dynamics is a big thing that I'm doing. Right. So, um, I st- actually I work with uh, on a podcast with two other uh, MVP females, right? And we kind of want to say, hey, we want some more women in here. Like we're kind of tired of some of this stuff. Let's let's try to change it. So we started a podcast. We call it like the untold stories, right? And we just have fun and kind of just talk about like some of the things that we're, we're dealing with and we're growing our following there to kind of just, again, spread that awareness and community um, for you know, not just women, but just kind of inclusive, inclusivity, right? Diversity, inclusion. Um, So that's one of the things. Um, Additionally, there's another Women in Dynamics um, kind of larger committee that started out of EMEA and in World Directions EMEA Milan this um, last November. So uh, I'm lucky enough to, to be able to hang out with those amazing women um, Vicki Critchley is, of course, the the chair there, and I had the amazing opportunity to work very closely and under her at Bamboom Cloud, 
Um, so that was, you know, one of the things that she still wanted me to be a part of. And so I was oh so gracious and lucky enough to, to be able to do that. So working in a lot of areas, you know, kind of in, in women in tech, um, always kind of doing again, kind of diversity and inclusion and trying to grab from, from underneath, do you know what I mean? Kind of from like the, the depths and the reaches that people wouldn't normally think um, oh, I should be in tech or I'll be good or anything like that. Right. And so, um, I know that you said it was the second tech center, but I'm, I've actually already opened the, the, the second tech center. So we have now two in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I'll be, you know, they sound really great. I wish that they, it, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to really see some fruit out of them, you know, because it's just so new of a concept for, for these areas, but they're being, they're, they're doing really good. So the first one was in like a local women's shelter. So they've had, I think tech for about a year and a half now. And so like the quality of life that these ladies have is significantly like different, right? You know, are any of them power up gurus? Well, no, you know, but Rome wasn't built in a day, right? But now they have access. They're able to kind of get a lot of their normal things. Um, some of them are doing additional training, um, one lady got like her paralegal license. So that's all great, right? We're going in the right direction there. Um, and then we opened up a second one um, just kind of a few blocks away, kind of again, and maybe the, like a lower, kind of a lower income area, um, just kind of for the safety of the women at the shelter. We had to do that. Um, but uh, but yeah, so we just got internet um, kind of up and going in there recently. So kind of, again, needing to start. They've been doing a lot of like one-off courses. So I actually have a goal to get a third one. Uh, is my goal this year is to get a third, a third tech center um, going. So kind of in more of a rural area. Um, so instead of kind of like, you know, I mean like community downtown, there's also like rural areas that I live close to. So that was a thought process um as well and then I'm always just trying to do like one-off like um I think mentoring and helping and and I I think I kind of have a brand of being quite uh I guess we'll call it vulnerable <laughs> or or extra right just hard on the sleeve type of thing but I love what I I feel like that's a community outreach because I have so many people come up to me right and 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 they're just grinding you know what I mean and and they get it right they see somebody that knows you know what it's like to to work hard and like make something happen especially if you didn't think that you could come from that area right so I love being able to really mentor and encourage a lot of and it's, it's a lot of females, right, I think, but that's kind of very natural with, with my messaging. And I'm open to everyone, but I love, it's also like a, a special place. So, um, yeah, I guess I could talk forever on that. I'll <laughs> leave it at that. No, this is good. This is good because you don't know how many other women around the world are going to hear this and, and see what you're doing and say, hey, I could do something like this. Um, what do you need? How could people help you and support you in what you're doing with with this? Yeah. So, what do I need? Hmm. I just came from directions, um, and one of the conversations that we had in there, um, you know, and whether it's just myself and, and other women too, right? This is a way that honestly people can kind of be an ally for other women. Um, you know, if you have a strong name or you have an opportunity, right? Or basically like if you have a strong name in, in a specific field, right? Um, if you think that somebody is good, right? And and they're adequate and, and maybe you're mentoring them, then, then share the spotlight, right? Like give them, give them props, like in a vocal setting or like, I'm sorry, in like a social setting, right? And so, you know, cause I was kind of saying that, um, I was like, well, I don't think, my session didn't get picked and that's okay. Right. It kind of, kind of sounds so spoiled. I can't even believe we're putting this on the recording, but that's okay. Cause it's true. Um, so, um, yeah. And I was like, okay, well I get it. Right. Like my name, I have a lot of qualifications, right? Like that's what I looked at. I'm like, I feel, I feel like I've spoken at many conferences. Um, I'm an MVP. I sit on a couple different things. I have a huge committee, you know, community reach, 
um, I was voted in by several people that were on the content board to, to present. But for whatever reason, the final say like took my name away, right? Which is fine. That happens to so many people. But when I look at kind of like the specific content, like at the end of the day, the person that presented that content over me had a much higher name. They've been in the industry for a very long time, right? And so I totally get that, right? We've got to fill seats. Um, But how is anyone ever going to get a big name if they don't get an opportunity at the big stage, right? So so that's what I look at. You know, whenever you see how can how can people help me? Um, well, it's helping me, but it's also helping other people, right? You know, whether you give like myself and, and World Max an opportunity to, you know, kind of meet your needs um, instead of going somewhere else, that's obviously one thing. But, you know, I think kind of more importantly in continuing to spread that message is, you know, if you if you have a platform, you know, kind of kind of share that, right? And so I was asking some of my mentors, you know, could could we co-present? And they're like, of course, you know, um, to to kind of share that messaging. So I think I think that that's my answer for that, Mark. I like it. I'm going to drill further though on the subject. Um, um, when I say, how can people help you? Um, you you talked about um, your your two with the plan of a third center opening up. You talked about just getting internet on. How are things been, you know, how do you fund things like internet connections? How do you fund people, um, uh, you know, with maybe laptops or computers so they can get on? Because we work in the cloud and there's two fundamental things needed to make that possible. One is a computer and one is internet access. And we're not even talking about then electricity, facilities, everything else, you know, that uh, to make a, cen- a center run. So I come back to how okay. can people help you? Okay, great. Now that thank you for the focus there. Um, so in that capacity, <laughs> uh, I literally panhandled for internet funds at DynamicsCon Live. Uh, you know, I said, hey, Molly, can I just walk around and kind of share this story? Um, so it's super grassroots right now at this point, right? So I think that in ways of helping, I think it's interesting. Right. So fundraising is always a a thing that people can help. But I'm always kind of also looking for a little bit of organization or just kind of some thought leadership, because I don't I don't run these tech centers. I'm fundraising and supporting other people. And it's a very, very grassroots. Right. Like somebody um, came to me finally at <laughs> a dynamics con. They're like, "Look, I'll I'll pay for it. I would like to stay anonymous. Just let me know how I can, you know, do it." And I was like, "Well, the way it works is like I call up. You got two options. Like you can just trust me and give me the money and know that I'm going to do it. But that's a big ask because I don't have a lot to be able to share with them at this point because the organization that I'm working with is so grassroots or." Um, or I can call the cable company and then, you know, we can three-way you and then we have to three-way the other person so that they say it's okay for you to pay. And then you, so it's, it's quite messy. You know what I mean? And in that regards, that's what we've been doing. Um, and so, like I said, I'm just really kind of open to ways, right? What I try to do is kind of get a block of money all at one time, right? So what this what this most recent chunk of money that I fundraised for is going to cover Wi-Fi services for these two buildings for the next year. Um, and so I just try to do it in blocks and then I literally just call the cable company and pay it there. And then they like de- deprecate it. Um, so yeah. And I mean, on the first time for computers, just through donations and asking, I spoke at a couple like rotary clubs um, and got some computers, you know, donated for the second. Yeah. And then for the second tech center, again, just kind of asking around um, Bam Boom Cloud, they did actually fully um, support and buy, I think it was five desktop computers. Um, yep. Yep. So they, they paid for, you know, all of the computers there. So that's what I've been doing, right? So I don't, I don't know. I guess the help would be maybe more organization or more more thoughts, you know, kind of around that. And I think everyone's kind of working on some of these things, um, you know, independently of everyone needs laptops, right? And there, uh, there's a whole supply chain issue thing right now. But 
Mm, yeah, totally. Have you spoken with Britta Rexted? Mm. Do you know Britta Rexted? Mm-mm. So she's a Bazap MVP, seven times MVP, um, coming into her eighth. And um, I recommend you actually reach out and chat to her about that that bit you spoke about the in there, some thought leadership things, things around this, because her story is a very interesting story. And I think that it would be worth having a chat. I'm pretty sure when I was living in the UK, I did a podcast with her. So you might even want to go and, and listen to that for context, but it could be well worth, you know, and through your MVP portal, you would be able to reach directly out to her um, once you're logged in. Um, so it might be worth 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 doing that just just as an idea, which is obviously this podcast has taken a unique direction, and I like that um, about it. But it's yeah, it's worth looking at. What just for those that of course come along to listen to go, how can I be like Mary, and how can I become an MVP, and and what's involved? Tell us what your perspective is of one, how you became an MVP. Um, what was different after you became an MVP? So like before, once you got it, and then you've been an MVP for a while, what's your what's your takeaways, your hindsights, the things that it's worth knowing? Yeah, um, great question. So my journey, how did I become an MVP? Um, it's just really a lot of engagement with the community to, to begin with, right? It's about engagement and outreach and impact. Um, and so... You know, it's just, I saw when I got started in tech, I was using the forums a lot because I needed the help, right? And then um, as I was, you know, engaging a lot in them, then I started to learn the answers. So then I started to answer the questions. And then I saw this thing like MVP, right? And I'm a go big or go home type of girl. So uh, I want the best in whatever I am. So naturally the goal became MVP, right? So how do you, how do you become that? Right. And it's just, um, I think like producing a lot of content, it's really sharing content, sharing content and knowledge. And it comes in a bunch of different mediums, right? Whether it be, you know, live speaking, um, virtual speaking, I think really became a big factor with COVID, right? When you took that like live concept out of it um, and really opened the doors up for a lot of people. There's, of course, blogging, um, videos, um, even mentoring, um, communication on forums. You can actually even like add um, social media posts as contributions now, right? So like the forms of how you do it are really limitless. I always just encourage people to do like whatever is most natural to them, whatever is easiest to them to kind of do and like have that be like their medium because people are going to go to different people for certain things anyways, right? So, um, but anyway, so I just started to create that content as well because one, I wanted to be an MVP, but also I understood the value and wanted to be able to like give back and pay it forward as well, right? Um, and that just had a really nice effect. I mean, I was just really genuine in, in what I was trying to to do, um, and and really consistent in that. And again, I can't believe the things I say on podcasts, but that's okay. I often wonder how I got to be become an MVP as well, Mark. Because um, somebody nominated me, I went through the application process, I didn't quite understand fully how to fill out the form. And then I got, um, I got an email that said, you know, I didn't make it. And I was like, Oh, man, that really stinks. I was quite devastated. Um, I talked to Emma Darcy about it. And she was like, why don't you you didn't fill out the form, right? Why don't you reply back to them and say, Hey, you closed it a bit early, like, can I have a chance to, you know, kind of fix this up? And so they said yes. And then I was really busy. And it was only like two weeks. And then the Power Platform Community Conference Online happened. And I was already like teed up to be a speaker. And they were only taking like 13 people to speak in this whole thing. And I was like looking at the people I was like going against. And there's like, I cannot win a Canvas app, Power Automate over like Chris Huntingford or John Levesque, right? Like these things aren't happening. But then I saw a TED style talk and I was like, oh, that's my space, right? So I submitted, um, anyway, so I gave a TED style talk on how the power platform can change your life. Not technical at all, just completely off the script. Well, uh, not off the script, but that's what it was. 
and there was like these troll idiots in the in the chat they and they were like booing me um and telling me like how terrible it was and everything like this like move on like this isn't technical like and but of course the community is amazing right and they're like raw like you don't know how to like read a schedule you're the dummy right and, like all these nice things and um that was at the end of September, like the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, right? And then magically on October 1st, I got this most amazing email that said, congratulations, you're an MVP. Um, and so I don't know. I don't know how I got to be an MVP, Mark, but that's how I got to be an MVP. <laughs> That's that that is an awesome story. I feel like they're correlated. I don't really know, but uh I I don't look back. I'm so grateful and so, you know what I mean, thankful for it and I hope that I get to keep it for a long time, but I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to be the same person regardless, right? And I think that that's what a lot of MVPs really say and understand. I mean, of course you you have people in there here for like their own stage, right? And and they just like to toot their horn and and they're really frustrating. But I don't think that those people, like, they can't stay an MVP for long because it has to be so exhausting, right? To, like, be like that. Like, to really, like, ride the ride and, and put it in everything that you have to to continue to be an MVP for, like, years after year. Um, you have to love it. You know what I mean? And it just has to be who you are. And, and you just have to really want to help other people. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. Thanks again and see you next time.